Hey everyone, Charles Judd here, and in this video, I want to take a look at a new resource for CCIE studies that Cisco has made available to us recently. Many of you know that I'm currently studying for CCIE Enterprise, and if you're currently studying for this yourself, or if you've even explored the possibility, you understand the very wide range of topics that you need to master in order to prepare for the lab exam. With the newest update, we've gone from CCIE Route Switch to CCIE Enterprise Infrastructure, and we have lots of new topics related to the future of networking, things like virtualization, network assurance, and automation. So the amount of information that you need to master alone can be quite overwhelming. Now, if you're like me and you're a bit of a nervous test taker, you can add in the fact that you have to actually travel to a physical lab location somewhere and use unfamiliar familiar equipment to perform the lab. Well, one of the things that Cisco has done to ease at least some of that burden is they've released their CCIE desktop environment as a virtual machine for anyone to download and use for their own studies. This eliminates the variable of going in completely blinded to everything, allowing you to acclimate to the environment that you'll be using on your lab day to perform the tasks. So let's jump in and take a look at this resource. So first, we can find this actual resource in an article on the Cisco Learning Network where we'll find the host VM available for download. This should work in all major virtualization tools and you'll see that it consists of three different files that we need to download. We have the manifest file, we have the OVF file, and we have the VMDK disk image. These image files should work in all major virtualization platforms. I actually have that installed in VMware, but you can certainly use that in something like VirtualBox as well, or any number of other virtualization platforms that will support these file types. Now, this virtual desktop does underscore one of the big changes to the CCIE lab format from the perspective of the actual hardware that you'll be using during the exam. In the new version of this CCIE lab exam, the actual lab equipment is extensively virtualized. In fact, aside from the Catalyst 9300 series hardware switches used for the software-defined access portion of the lab topology, all of the other pieces of the topology are going to run as virtual machines, including the host VM, this piece that Cisco has provided for our studies. In the video description below, I've added a link to this Cisco Learning Network article where you can download this host VM for yourself. Again, the total size is just over six gigs, and when you install this, we can see some of the technical details here. If we install it and just leave everything to the default settings, it's going to allocate two virtual CPUs and two gigs of RAM, which is the minimum suggested hardware. Now you can run this with a single virtual CPU, but you might find that the performance suffers. So two vCPUs is the recommendation. And obviously the more resources you can allocate, the better your performance is going to be. Now, before we look at the host VM itself, I'll also mention that as far as the physical desktop environment goes, you will have two 24 inch monitors to work from. And of course, a typical QWERTY keyboard and a mouse. So no big surprises there. That's been typical in past CCIE labs as well. Now, as for the host VM, let's jump into that. The first thing you'll likely notice is that as opposed to previous versions, this desktop is no longer a Windows-based machine as it used to be. This is now a custom Linux distribution. More specifically, it's based on Debian. So this VM is going to be used to access things like vManage and DNA Center to perform automation tasks and to troubleshoot the lab network. So needless to say, you do need to be familiar with working in Linux, which again is another great reason to leverage this host VM, particularly if Linux isn't something that you're super familiar with. One of the main reasons for this change is that it seemed to be the easiest way for Cisco to implement many of the tools that are needed for the lab, especially in regard to network automation and programming. 
On the desktop, you see that we have a Wireshark instance here, so that's available for network diagnostics. If you're familiar with Wireshark, you know that we can really drill down into network traffic and get a very granular view of things, so that's helpful. We also see LX Terminal which very simply is just a lightweight terminal emulator designed to take up a minimum amount of system resources. If we open this, you'll see that we are easily able to gain root access without any issues should you need to do that. Just below the LX terminal on our desktop, we also see Eclipse, Eclipse IDE, IDE meaning Integrated Development Environment. So Eclipse is essentially a place where we can use multiple programming languages actually as we prefer, and we can consolidate our code writing. So the difference between an IDE and something like, let's say, Notepad++ is that an IDE is going to have a code editor, it's gonna have a compiler, a debugger, and several other features. So this is much more than just a simple text editor. And below that on our desktop, we see Postman. Postman is an API client that allows us to create and test APIs. If you'd like to learn more about how that works, you can find a video detailing more about Postman here on our channel. And in fact, I'll also go ahead and link that in the video description as well. So let's close Postman out. And of course, we have other tools available at our disposal. If we look under our accessories, we're gonna see things like a calculator. We see several editors here, such as JOE. We also see Midnight Commander. If we go down under the Debian folder, look under Applications and Editors, we also have XEdit. Under Network, Communication, we have Telnet and XBIF. If we jump down to our Programming folder here, you'll see that we have Idle as well. So lots more tools than just those on the desktop are at our disposal. And you'll notice we have a Firefox browser shortcut pinned to the desktop as well. So this is going to give us access to some documentation that we are allowed during the exam. And I've pulled up some of that here for us to look at. We can, of course, access the Cisco Solutions site. We have the Cisco Support and Documentation site. And we'll also have some other pieces of documentation available to use as well, such as the Python documentation. Now, one caveat here. Don't rely solely on being able to find whatever you need to do in the support or the documentation. By all accounts, there just isn't enough time available during the lab to rely solely on the documentation. But this can be a really nice lifeline if you get stuck on something. I would also say that you would definitely want to familiarize yourself with how this is structured. You wanna be familiar with using the documentation. Understanding how to navigate the documentation is probably the most important skill related to actually using the documentation because this documentation is vast. You can quickly go down a rabbit hole. So you want to understand how this works, how it's structured, and how to find things. Also know that as with the previous lab exams, the documentation is going to be limited and redacted in certain areas. So you won't have access to everything that you will from your home desktop on your lab day. I would say that all things considered, this is a really good resource that Cisco has provided us with to gain some familiarity before we actually sit down on lab day. I hope you found this content useful and I wanna thank you sincerely for watching.